the starting lineup for the Eastern Conference champions, the Orlando Magic. At one guard, number 11, 6'5", a rookie from Western Kentucky University, Courtney Lee. The other guard, number one, 6'2", 10th campaign from Fresno State, Raper Alston. At one forward, number 15, 6'10", ninth season out of Turkey, Hidu Turgaloo. The other forward, number 9, 6'10", 11th year from Elite Elsick High School, Rashard Lewis. And at center, number 12, 6'11", 5th year from Southwest Atlantic Christian Academy, Dwight Howard. The head coach in his fifth year, Stan Van Gundy. franchise with 14 NBA titles, the most wins in NBA history, the Western Conference champions, your Los Angeles Lakers. And one forward number three, six, eight, fifth year out of UCLA, Trevor Ariza. The other forward number 16, seven feet, eighth campaign from Spain, Pau Gasol. Starting at center number 17, seven feet, fourth year from St. Joseph's High School, Andrew Bynum. At one guard number two, six one, 13th year out of Arkansas, Little Rock, Derek Fisher. And the other guard is number 24, six six, 13th season out of Laura Marion High School, Kobe Bryant. The head coach in his 18th year, Hall of Famer, Bill Jackson. Go, Ladies go. and gentlemen, game one starts now. And so it begins the journey, the destination, the dream. You've lived your life for this one moment. A chance to march into the pantheon of greatness where a legacy of champions awaits.
The Los Angeles Lakers, one of the most storied franchises in all of sports, led by one of the most dynamic players this game has ever seen. Kobe Bryant and the Lakers back on the final stage for the second consecutive year. Facing off against an Orlando Magic team. Yes, a surprise to many being here on this stage. Once again, featuring the charismatic, physically imposing 23-year-old center on the final stage for the first time in 14 years. It's the Lakers and the Magic ready to battle for an NBA championship. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to game one of the 2009 NBA Finals. For the Lakers, they've waited a whole year to get back here. Last year, you remember, their season ended in embarrassment, a 39-point loss in game six to Boston. They vowed to be much tougher and much better, and they have been, and they feel they're ready to finish it off this year. Of course, led by Kobe Bryant and head coach Phil Jackson, looking for his NBA record 10th championship as a coach. He's currently tied with the late Red Auerbach. Meanwhile, for the Orlando Magic, back in training camp, no one expected this team to be here. They had devastating injuries during the course of the regular season, crushing defeats in the playoffs, but nothing seemed to stop them, and they keep getting better and better, led by a fiery, energetic head coach in Stan Van Gundy in his first NBA Finals appearance. And that's where we will bring in our two analysts. Jeff Van Gundy and Mark Jackson. Hello, everyone. Again, welcome to game one. And let's start right off the bat. Stan is your brother, and there's been a lot read and talked about last couple of days how uncomfortable that makes you. That makes Mark and I very happy. But I know it's, you've got an interesting dynamic coming into this game. How do you feel? Well, I feel really immense pride in what Stan's been able to accomplish, and I'm really hoping for the best for him in this series. For him to attain his goal, what do the Magic need to do? Well, I think two things. Dwight Howard's got to dominate the paint at both ends and the great equalizer for any team that's an underdog is a three-point shot Dwight Howard had a dominant series 70% free throw shooting is important because that means the magic can go to him 40 points 14 rebounds in game six and then the three ball for the magic is so important you see the first two rounds didn't shoot it well against the Cavaliers they knocked it in led by their two forwards Turkoglu and Richard Lewis meanwhile for the Lakers as mentioned coach by Phil Jackson. Now, fortunately, there's no relation, so no bias from you. But for the Lakers to finish off what they feel is theirs, what do they have to do in this series? Well, no question about it. It starts and ends with Kobe Bryant, the best player in this series, no question about it. You take a look at what he has done throughout the course of the playoffs. He's at his best when he's shooting a high percentage. Also, the results are in wins, getting it done. He's going to score regardless. It's about quality versus quantity. But this team is exceptional when they get the big guys doing the job. In games five and six of the Western Conference Finals, it was Gasol and Odom who stepped up and helped Bryant. So it's the Lakers and the Orlando Magic. Game one, best of seven, 2000 NBA Finals. Tip off coming up next. Spanish language version of tonight's game presented by ESPN Deportes. Use the SAP button on your television as we're set to go for game one of the 2009 NBA Finals. Ray Austin and the Magic will bring it up. These two teams, it's been long seasons and some struggles in their playoffs to get here. But they are the two best teams in the NBA. As Hito Turkoglu looks for Dwight Howard. Howard spinning against Andrew Bynum. Puts it up. Bank shot won't go. Bynum the rebound. And during the regular season, the Magic won both games. They haven't played since January. Jeff, is anything to take from those two games in the regular season? Well, I think, obviously, with Jameer Nelson being out for the rest of the season, he was their leading scorer. You know, that's a big factor. But the pick and roll has given L.A. problems. And the Magic are a pick and roll team. They're a tough matchup for a lot of teams. Foul on the entry pass. That basket won't count. They certainly were a tough matchup for the Cleveland Cavs. Meanwhile, Mark, the finals are a different stage than the playoffs, even the conference finals. You played in one, Jeff, of course, you coached in one. What's the difference in terms of the finals and how you're feeling when you go on the floor? Well, is the stage. I remember playing for Larry Bird, the Hall of Fame player, the head coach of the Pacers. He said, this is going to be a different ball game getting to the finals. Game. He told the truth as Gasol hands it off to Bynum. And Bynum such a big key. Gasol and Bynum, when the Laker big men play well, they're a tough team to beat. And there's Rashard Lewis, who has been just superb in these playoffs. Lewis lost it and then got fouled. Derek Fisher with the hit. 
Well, both power forwards have mismatches. Gasol going at Rashard Lewis, that's a mismatch. Good pass by Gasol, good finish, and then Rashard Lewis has the advantage at the other end as he drove it by Gasol. And it's very interesting. I would take the mismatch of Gasol on the offensive end because Gasol could be quicker defensively getting out to contest shots to Rashard Lewis. Rashard Lewis can't be stronger or bigger. Austin gets in, kicks it out. Vito Turkoglu knocks down the three. And they have been a terrific three-point shooting team. The power of the three so evident with these Orlando Magic throughout the playoffs. Well, it's the great equalizer for a prohibitive underdog. So if you can shoot the three and guard the three well, it'll keep you in some games. Andrew Bynum starts off strong. Bynum, of course, had the knee surgery and missed a good part of the season. Has come back and has been very rusty in the playoffs, inconsistent, but a good start as Ray for Austin beats Derek Fisher off the dribble. That's a good job by Ray Austin. He's going to have to make Derek Fisher and the guards of the Lakers defense. Gasol stripped by Austin. And Orlando forces the turnover. Orlando, though, so much more than just a three-point shooting team in Dwight Howard. They become one of the better defensive teams in the NBA. Howard across the lane, left-handed throws it in. And that's where he's improved his offensive game, Mark. Oh, well, certainly has improved. Feels much more comfortable and confident on the low block. Give credit to Patrick Ewan, Hall of Fame center. Does a great job of tutoring Dwight Howard. Kobe Bryant rattles it in. Both teams shooting well to start. Lakers have hit their first three. Magic three for four. Both teams coming off impressive game six clinchers in their conference finals. Orlando knocking out LeBron James and the Cavs. And the Lakers being a tough Nuggets team as Gasol gets the rebound. No need for Ray for Austin to shoot a floater there. He could have gone in and shot a layup. Kobe Bryant against the rookie, Courtney Lee, an impressive rookie, but not an easy assignment in your first finals. And he picks up a quick foul. You can, you can see right away the Lakers looking to go at Courtney Lee. They're putting the ball in the hands of Bryant. Isolations also post up, so they're trying to take advantage of that matchup. Courtney Lee, the rookie out of Western Kentucky, their first round pick, played four years of college. He has played so well, so impressive. Does a good job defending there, although Bryant thought he got hit. And that's one of the keys when you're defending Bryant is just don't foul it. Ray for Austin's had some big games. Misses. Back on the rebound. Austin was the player they acquired when they lost Jameer Nelson to that shoulder injury that Jeff mentioned. Bryant kicks it out, but Nelson is suited up, and we expect him to be the first guard off the bench. That's the very latest word that we've received. And that's such an important facet of Orlando. It'll be interesting to see how it works out. He injured it back on February 3rd, had surgery. They didn't think he'd be back. He's two months ahead of schedule as Fisher gets inside, misses, and second opportunity puts it in. Already had four lead changes. It'll be interesting to see. We know Nelson's talented, but he hasn't played in four months. And I'm sure people say, why bring him back? Well, this is a team that made it to the finals, but Jameer Nelson gives them an extra weapon as Turkoglu, exceptional drive getting to the cup. He gives them a weapon that, that goes right to the weakness of the Lakers. Pick and roll in a scoring point guard. If he can't be effective in this series, they can't win the series. So, to me, it's a no-brainer. Bynum off to a strong start. Six points, three rebounds for Bynum. And the Lakers up by one. Lewis, good ball movement. Keeping Bynum in the game, the guard Howard, so important for the Lakers. Howard goes right at him, draws the foul. Bynum's been getting in some foul difficulty, but he's off to a good start as he picks up his first. Well, this is a perfect matchup for Andrew Bynum. On the defensive end, be long and then rebound in basketball. Use that size and then attack the body of Dwight Howard. Defensively, you can't let him off the hook. You got to stay in front of him, contain, and force him to shoot over. That time, careless foul by Bynum. What a season it's been for this young man, Dwight Howard, at 23 years old, first team All-NBA, defensive player of the year, led the league in block shots, led the league in rebounding, and it just keeps getting better and better, capped it off with a 40-point performance in the game, six clincher against Cleveland, Stan Van Gundy saying, I don't know what more he could have done for our team that night. And to me, a big part of this series is going to come down to this. Howard is going to get to the free throw line, it's going to be make or miss. If he can make him like he did against Cleveland, they have a good chance 
of staying in games. If he can't, that means they can't go to him as much. Then they become strictly a perimeter team, and it's a more difficult task. 59% from the line during the regular season, but hit 70% in that Cleveland series as Bryant off to a good start with his second field goal. And both teams shooting well early. The Magic, a very good road team during the regular season, 27-14. And also a terrific road team during the playoffs. Remember, they gave one game one in Boston and game seven in Boston. Also one game one in Cleveland. So they've had some impressive victories on the road. Well, there's no secret. This is a pick and roll jump shooting team. They knock down shots. It does not matter where they're playing the game. They can win anyway. And Turkoglu is one who's played actually better on the road as he knocks it down. Turkoglu, kind of a Lamar Odom type. When he plays at a high level, the Magic are a tough team to beat. Think about it. He got the opportunity when Grant Hill left via free agency. It's the first time he was going to be a featured part of any offense. Brian, quick move, blocked by Howard, but he hit it off the backboard. It was close. They call it a goal 10. And the question is, if you're Stan Van Gundy as Dwight Howard, Help defense certainly got to the glass first and then how it blocked it. That's a goaltender. When do you go to Petras to defend Kobe Bryant? Not that he can stop him, but he has a better chance of containing. Michael Petras coming off the bench. He was terrific in the Cleveland series. Howard across the lane. Misses. Ball bat of the way out of bounds. And it's Laker ball. Petras from France in his first year with Orlando hit some big shots and played some pretty tough defense on LeBron James. That might sound silly considering the numbers he put up, but he did a good job. Gasol, tough matchup for Lewis down this end. Gasol rushed it. Turkoglu and Ariza, also a fun matchup. Ariza's been one of the surprising stars of this postseason. Turkoglu off the dribble. Can't get it to go. And Bynum looks very active on him. Oh, this is a great matchup for him. You know, talking to Dwight Howard, he said Kendrick Perkins of the Celtics was the toughest matchup. Well, certainly Andrew Bynum can do similar things. Pretty shot from Bryant. Can't get it to go down. And here's Courtney Lee. He is fearless going to the basket. Misses it, gets his own rebound, puts it back up and in. And to me, this is the biggest factor when you spread the floor with four shooters, is can you rebound well enough at either end? And they've struggled to rebound the ball when it's not Dwight Howard. So everybody's got to chip in for the Magic to keep it even against a very good Laker rebounding team. All tied up. We played six and a half minutes. Howard reaching in. Bynum spins away. Blocked by Howard, but a foul. And that'll be the first foul on Dwight Howard. And we'll have our first timeout. Well, Hito Turkoglu has got a lot of skill. Here, running the pick and roll, drives away, uses the rim for protection. Good finish. And then again, six foot ten, gets separation. Six lead changes already in three ties. Uh, last series was all about LeBron James. Even when we beat him, it was about how LeBron reacted after the game. That's all that matters, right? That's all that matters. It's all about LeBron. This series is all about Kobe. Okay, it's all about Kobe. So look, they don't have to give you any respect. The media, the fans, nothing. But the thing they can't take away from you is winning games. Hey, great start, great game. All right, let's get this thing off on the right foot right here. Let's go. Now. Let's go, baby. Dominate. One, two, three. Dominate. They have gotten off on the right foot, tied at 14. What a job Stan Van Gundy's done in just his second year. They won 52 games in his first year, 59 this year, the number three seed. And a team, as we said, knocked off the defending champion Celtics and then beat LeBron James and the Cavs. Not many people expected that. Everybody had LeBron against Kobe in the finals, but Van Gundy and the Magic had different ideas, and they just seemed to get better and better as the playoffs have gone on. Well, he does an outstanding job of coaching his team Sending messages, motivating. I tell you what, I would purchase the Wired with Stan Van Gundy. <laughs> I'm telling you, if this coaching stuff doesn't work out, reality TV. <laughs> what is that, John and Kate plus eight? They're gonna have a uh, they're gonna have a run for their money. Has he ever worn a tie? Yeah, he used to wear ties. I think he wore one to start his first game with the Magic, and then he went with that look. Hey, when you look like us, there's no good look. <laughs> 
Lakers by two. Tony Petit has checked in early. Michael Petrus as well. Lando going to the bench. There's Petit, a good veteran with some playoff experience. And a loose ball foul is going to go against the Lakers. Howard fighting for the rebound. I think they're going to call it on Gasol. And that will be his first. See, when Orlando plays bigger, like with Petit, they can't spread the floor more so they can help on Howard. But they have a better chance defensively. So it, it's really going to be a game of foul trouble. Gasol, Lewis, Howard, who gets in foul trouble first? Both teams have good players, good benches, but sometimes it really messes up the matchups. Preventing Ozut on the floor. As Austin, again, penetration. Good job getting inside, finding Turkoglu. Brian on Turkoglu. You know, Turkoglu, nice shuffle pass to Petit. And that's the pressure that they put on your defense. Constant penetration, looking to make plays for somebody else. That time, Austin to Turkoglu to Petit. Petit had two very good regular season games against the Lakers. Gasol again, a little quick on his shot. This is that one. And we're still tied with four and a half remaining here in the first. Both teams shooting 50% from the field to start. There's Petras. He was red hot from downtown in the Cleveland series. Pulls up. Off the mark. It'll be interesting to see as Lamar Odom about to come into the ball game. Does Stan Van Gundy get Rashad Lewis back in the game to downside? Bryant, the offensive rebound. Petrus is trying to hound Bryant. Back up to Fisher. Can Fisher get going with his jumper? He's been off the mark so far in the playoffs, but he is a big-time clutch performer. Knocks down that one. I like that. He's a knockdown shooter, but he's a guy that don't fall in love with the three. That time his shot fake gets a better shot. You know, they're really laying off Tony Petit. Petit misses that one. Kind of daring him to shoot, but that's a shot that the Lakers will give him all series long. Gasol spots up. Kyle Gasol's had another terrific year. All NBA third teams had some huge games in the playoffs, especially games five and six in the Denver series. Again, Gasol really laying off. Goes down to double team and a reach in foul. And Bynum and Gasol both upset. The foul is going to go against Bynum. And that's two on Bynum. So he'll go to the bench. Shows you the many facets of Gasol's game. Can post, can put the ball on the floor, can lead the break, can knock down the top of the key jump shot. Has it all. This is when the Lakers are most dangerous when he's aggressive on the offensive end. All right, now with Bynum on the bench, Odom comes in. Gasol most likely to guard Howard. Talk about different guys to guard for Gasol, either Rashard Lewis or Dwight Howard. A very difficult defensive challenge for Kyle Gasol in this series as Howard hits another free throw. He's basically going to be challenged all 48 minutes, whether he's guarding Rashard Lewis or Dwight Howard. Hey, Gasol, when Tony Petit comes in the game, says, thank you. <laughs> at, least I, at least I'm not under siege for every possession. Meanwhile, Odom, who is at the table, ready to come in when Bynum picked up that second foul, he finally gets in. He is the definition of the X-Factor, as we've said over and over again, when Lamar Odom plays at the top of his game, you can't beat the Lakers. Very interesting that they're putting Dwight Howard on Lamar Odom and Petit on Gasol because of Howard already having one foul. Petit blocks that shot. Ariza fouling Turkoglu, who throws it up as soon as he felt the contact. Smart play from Turkoglu. And he's going to go to the line and shoot a couple of free throws. Just under three remaining. First quarter of game one. Back at the Staples Center, the celebrities out full force. Maria Shriver enjoying her popcorn. Of course, this year, Bill Russell, the NBA Finals trophy, is now the Bill Russell's trophy. David Stern sitting right in front with Adam Silver. And, of course, in his usual seat, Jack is here. And fired up early. He was already getting into the ear of Dwight Howard in the pregame. Meanwhile, for the first time tonight, let's check in with Doris Burke. Hey, Doris. Hey, Mike. Well, the Orlando Magic had three primary concerns as it pertains to Jameer Nelson's return. They all had to do, obviously, with his physical health, both in the short term and in the long term. One, his strength. Where was he at physically? The worst case scenario, if he re-injured himself, was a four to six month rehabilitation. They were okay with that. The second was conditioning. They put him through about a week ago games of four on four. He was able to absorb some contact, no issues there. The third was endurance. Now, he practiced 
practice Tuesday and Wednesday looked a heck of a lot better yesterday, so they were much more confident. As far as Stan Van Gundy was concerned, he said, listen, this is not about making the easiest decision. It's about what's best for the team. He will not be on a short leash once he enters the basketball game. And I guess, Mark and Jeff, the question becomes, you know, what are the challenges for Jameer, for the team and the coaching staff with him as he gets set to return after a four-month absence? This is him warming up, guys. He's missed 40, uh, four months, and you saw the number of games as well. Well, for me, there's no middle ground. As a coach, Stan Van Gundy, and as an organization in Orlando Magic, make sure that he's ready to play. This is not a token appearance. This is for all the marbles. If he's going to play, then you play him like he's Jameer Nelson. The advantage is he brings certain things to the table that Anthony Johnson and Rafa Alston do not. He made his first All-Star team prior to the injury. He was second in the NBA in three-point shooting. Nice pass. Luke Walton removes the ball so well, sets up the song. One thing I'm impressed with coaching, we touched on it, the versatility of both of these teams. They become different teams as, as they go to their bench. Howard, offensive foul. Two fouls on Howard, two fouls on Bynum as Martin Gortat will come in. And, and this is the game right here, foul trouble. Howard picks up his second before Gasol picks up his second. Good moving of the feet by Gasol. I think that's a good call. You're the only Van Gundy to think so here in the building. Although, that's not a, much of an argument from him. No, but that's a good call. But you have to look back a couple of minutes ago when Dwight Howard picks up a cheap one against Andrew Bynum on the block. You can't pick up that one and he'd still be playing. you got to be smarter defensively. So Howard will sit. Gortat has played very well off the bench. In fact, he had an unbelievable game in the first round when Howard was suspended for the Game 6 clincher in Philadelphia. They don't lose much defensively, believe it or not, as Gasol misses and uh, Turkaloo the rebound. And the danger, Coach, is you, you look and you see Dwight Howard on the bench, and you're the Lakers, you think, oh, okay, it's easy now. It's just a setup. This is a dangerous team, the Orlando Magic, that's capable of going on runs. Well, you think about it, game six at Philadelphia, to close that series out, Dwight Howard suspended. Magic won by 25. I mean, this is a team, Gortat is underrated as a backup. You don't know his name, he's from Poland, the whole thing. Guy's a very good backup center. He played in the D League, played three years of pole ball in Germany. This is his second year in the NBA, as Jeff said. From Poland, a second round pick. Who this year has come alive, he's gonna be a free agent. There'll be a lot of people interested in him. Pass deflected by Bryant, somehow gets it to Petrus who fires away, had to shoot it with the shot clock expiring. And a new 24, thanks to Lewis. Lewis trying to post up Odom a little too physical on the defense. And the Lakers in the penalty. So free throws for Rashard Lewis. And to me, that's a bad foul by Lamar Odom. He has the ability to guard Rashard Lewis one-on-one -on -one because he's got exceptional lateral quickness and great length. No need in the penalty to foul him before he has the ball. And Rashard Lewis getting his first NBA Finals appearance. Lewis, an all-star this year from Houston, Texas, came right from high school to the NBA. His first nine years with Seattle, he was a second-round pick of the Sonics, developed into a high scorer with Seattle, then signed that huge contract, $118 million to come to Orlando. This is his second year, and he has blossomed in his second year, especially in the playoffs. So many big shots. And Stan Van Gundy says he plays his best games when it's the biggest games. Well, think about the two three-pointers he made against the Cleveland. Cavaliers. You know, everybody's talking about what Cleveland didn't do. That series is in the balance. Two big threes by him changed the course of that series. Gasol. Nice defense from Gortat. Gasol gets it back. Stripped by Turkaloo. Good hands from Orlando. Second turnover for L.A. Austin back pass. Gortat couldn't handle it. But they say deflected by the Lakers, says Danny Crawford. And it's still Orlando Ball. 19 on the shot clock. on a minute remaining here in the first. Not really much of a feeling out process. They're going at each other pretty good. Turkaloo, line drive. Bryant on the pull-up, hand in his face. Or tap the rebound. And to me, this is a different Kobe Bryant than we saw at the end of the Denver series. Right now, he's shooting a lot of shots. Good drive by Ray for Alston. 
I think Pietrus's size, it's not going to stop him, obviously, but it at least can give him more of a challenge. All right, Ralston is second field goal. We've already had seven lead changes here in the first quarter. Jordan Farmar just off the bench way long. And Gortat quickly with another rebound. Third blue guarded by Luke Wall. Both teams have gone to their benches early. Petrus flips it up, won't go. Odom fighting for the rebound. And the Lakers will hold it for the final shot of the period. I thought the Magic rushed that offensive trip. Beat clock instead of forcing up a quick. Laker crowd getting on its feet. Bryant the drive. Spin up and under. Won't go. And that will end the first quarter. Kobe Bryant, three of nine from the field. Meanwhile, Howard picked up two quick fouls, as did Andrew Bynum. So foul trouble, one of the stories here in the opening period. Leading scorer, Hito Turkoglu, he had nine. First quarter complete, Magic by two. And Van Gundy, in your pregame speech, you talked about getting off to a good start. What did you like in that first period? Well, I thought we did some good things in terms of moving the ball. I thought our defense early on was not very good at all. We got a little bit better as time went on in the quarter. Dwight, with those two early fouls, what do you want from Gortat? Well, Gortat's a good defender, good rebounder. He'll he'll do a good job. We don't have a problem playing with him. Coach, thank you. Mike. Okay. All right, Doris, Stan Van Gundy. And the Orlando Magic 59 wins during the regular season. Then in the playoffs, they actually lost their first game at home against Philadelphia. We're down 2-1 to one in the series, but defeated the Sixers. Then against the Celtics, had to win on the road in Game 7. And then also in the conference finals. Meanwhile, the Jazz took care of business for the Lakers. The Rockets, a tough seven-game series. The Nuggets gave them a battle, but they were maybe their two best performances of the postseason in Games 5 and 6. To advance to the finals as Jameer Nelson is in. Again, has not played since February the 3rd when he injured that shoulder. But he's been working out. And the all-star guard, you know he has been dying to get back on the floor. And Mike, he does not shy away from contact as Odin knocks in a jump shot. He's a physical guard. It'll be interesting to see that it was on it, the injury was to his shooting shoulder. Will he have the same range of motion as he did prior to the surgery? And each year he's gotten a little bit better. He's blossomed this year. As you mentioned, second in three-point shooting. He's a better three-point shooter than Ray Ralston. Not as good a defender. And there's a whistle away from the ball. It's going to go against Sasha Vujicic. This was against the Dallas Mavericks. It didn't really look like much. And all of a sudden, he went for it right away. That He obviously recovers well. They say he's two months ahead of schedule and what's been fun to watch he has been the number one cheerleader of the magic during the course of these playoffs he's really been supportive nice pass inside to Gortat and that's why he's so well liked by his team it's not going to upset anybody in terms of playing time right and I love what Otis Smith said to him don't take their success as a knock on what you know you weren't a part of you know be happy relish in it and understand that they would be able to have the same success with you Wojcic taken away by Gortat. He's been a good presence out there. There's Courtney Lee. Lee off the dribble. Gortat the rebound. Throws it back out. That's a three. Rashard Lewis, who led the NBA in the regular season in three-pointers, gives the Magic a five-point lead. I like what Nelson is doing, allowing the game to come to him. Two assists, making plays. This offense just have they have a different bounce when he's running the show. Walton can't go. Odom right there on the foul. Four points for Odom off the bench. And that's where L.A. is vastly, you know, people talk about Kobe and Gasol, but what they are, they are hard to block out. They are long, and they are a very good rebounding team. How about this start for Jameer Nelson? Terrific off the bench so far. A couple of assists. Hits his first shot with that mouth guard hanging out of his mouth. That reminds me of B.J. Armstrong with the Bulls. Always wanted to rip that out of his mouth. <laughs> Walton puts it in. That, of course, when you were coaching the mix. There's, yeah. You have nothing specific against B.J. No, no, it's just always losing that bothered me. <laughs> Nelson kicks it out. Courtney Lee for three. Look at Gartek battling in there. This Orlando Magic team, so resilient. They are not discouraged by the result of any one game or any one stretch. Nelson feeding Lewis. Lewis on the drive. Crowd wanted to travel. Lewis won't get it to go. Gets another offensive rebound. And Nelson calls out of play. 
Oh, Nelson barely six feet tall. Vujicic is on Lewis. Big height advantage there for Orlando. They're going to try and get it to him. Well, they switched the pick and roll, and that puts him in rotation. Good ball movement by the Magic. Beatrice misses by about three feet. There's the definition of an air ball. All for four for Beatrice. Perhaps a little hyped up playing in his first NBA Finals. Gasol pumped away by Lee. What a find this was. Courtney Lee drives, kicks it out. Nelson, inside pass to Lee. Pretty playing Jameer Nelson. What a spark off the bench. Three assists in three minutes. And Phil Jackson wants timeout. Four months of inactivity, nothing but rehab from surgery on his right shoulder. Jameer Nelson comes off the bench with a real spark. Well, I'm a wrestling fan, so I remember the full Nelson hole. That's what Jameer Nelson is doing offensively, looking to be aggressive. It's not about his scoring, it's about his facilitating, making plays into the thick of the Lakers defense. Outstanding job. The right decision time and time again. It starts with Jameer Nelson. Welcome back, young fella. The finals will continue on Sunday back here at the Staples Center. Earlier start, coverage again 7.30 Eastern, tip-off shortly after 8. And then it heads to Orlando for games 3, 4, and 5. Luke Walton gets inside and jumps it in. And that's where Courtney Lee's lack of size hurts them. They want Beatrice on Bryant. Luke Walton's a pretty good post-up player, especially against the size of Lee. Farmer putting some pressure. If Nelson plays, Farmer is going to see more action. As Lee drives hard to the glass, deflected by Odom. Only the second turnover for Orlando. Kobe Bryant, foul, that shot won't count. So the Lakers will take it out as Beatrice picks up his first. And one thing I would do if I was Jordan Farmer, I would attempt to pick up Jameer Nelson full court. Not to try to, to, to strip him of the basketball, just to put pressure on him. There's no way you're in basketball condition taking this much time off. Nice pass inside by them. Stops blocked by Gortat. Terrific defensive play. Martin Gortat off the bench for Howard. He's done an excellent job. Lewis for three. Bryant tips it a farm on. Lakers throughout the postseason have been playing a number of point guards. Farm arm, Vujicic, of course, Derek Fisher, Shannon Brown. Bynum, left-handed, won't go. Rotan has four rebounds and two blocked shots. He's a free agent at the end of the year. He's making himself some money right now. Drives inside. He got hit that time. Bynum close to picking up his third foul there. They let it go. They've been letting him play here early. Nice entry pass. Luke Long off the bench with six points. And you see right away the Lakers looking to go at whoever whoever Courtney Lee is defending. That's the second straight time Luke Walton on the post. Howard's going to come back in. Nelson throws it out. Beatrice trying to get it going. Off the dribble. Beatrice 0 for 5 from the field. Bryant gets inside. Tough shot. Gets it to go. He's hollering for a foul. And as Mark said, they are picking on Courtney Lee right now. And a timeout call by Orlando. And the Lakers get a standing ovation. Will be buying four of ten from the field. Well, again, this is just simple basketball. Size advantage, Brian in the post, over Courtney Lee in the help defense. Lakers, 6-0 run. Michael Jackson likes it. <laughs> The Los Angeles Lakers hoping to have that trophy by the end of this series here. Game one at the Staples Center. All started last year. They were in the finals against the Celtics and got obliterated. One of the worst losses in finals history. Beat by 39 at the new Boston Garden. Walking off the floor with green confetti falling on top of them as the Celtics celebrated. Such a disappointing loss. They were questioning about their toughness. We asked Kobe Bryant, are they different this year? We're a tougher team. Much tougher team. Tougher mentally, tougher physically. I mean, we're, um, you know, the, the, the series that we've had with Utah, Houston, and Denver, those are three very physical teams, tough teams. And, um, 
you know, we had to overcome adversity, and uh, particularly in that Houston and Denver series, and we managed to do that. Well, last year they only lost three games in the Western Conference playoffs prior to the finals. This year they lost six. Had some real tough battles, but they seem to win and play impressively in every game they had to have. As Lewis gets in and misses, Howard tips it, Walton tips it away. And I think Richard Lewis, instead of pulling up, has to go right to the rim. There's no one stopping him because they're attached to Dwight Howard. Brian tripped up as he went for it. Second foul on Michael Petrus. So, Mark, Magic down one. You really have to wonder about Stan Van Gundy's substitution patterns and some of the use of his timeouts, don't you think? Yeah, just doing a bad job of picking and choosing the spots when to make the right decisions. Hey, you guys sound like some of the other national media now. <laughs> Kobe Bryant knocks down the jumper. Well, the funny thing, this is the first time that a Jackson has outdueled a Van Gundy on ESPN. I even see. Eight straight points now by the Lakers. And it may not be the last either. <laughs> Nelson, wide open. Can't get it to go. Lakers doing a good job on the boards. Plus five right now. Both coaches will tell you that is so huge. And a foul on the entry pass. It's going to go against Lewis. They're not the penalty yet. Two on Lewis. Oh, but Kobe Bryant so good at making plays. Pick and roll. Does a good job of keeping the defender on his back and then exploding for the jump shot. Right now, Stan Van Gundy's upset because his defenders are on the wrong side of the offensive guys in the Lakers. Bryant keeps us right on top of him. He throws it down. Mark, you saw Kobe Bryant yesterday. He is as serious as we've seen him all season right now. Well, you take a look at Kobe Bryant certain times. He just has that look. And right now, he understands it's business time. Short answers, no smiles. He wants that NBA championship. Well, off another pick and roll. By Pietras. 10-0 run by the Lakers. Kobe Stay tuned for the finals player of the game vote presented by T-Mobile during the second half of tonight's game. Right now, 5.15 remaining second quarter. After leading by five, Magic now trail by five, a 10-0 run. They've missed eight of their last nine from the field, now shooting 36%. Howard goes right at Bynum, inside, short. Petrus keeps it alive, so does Howard, and Bynum comes out with it. But the length of the Lakers right there coming from help really discouraged Howard on that running hook. Bryant takes it away from Turkoglu after he grabbed the rebound. His pass deflected. And Fisher sets it up. Petrus already picking up a couple of quick fouls on Bryant. Bryant drives, puts it up, misses it by him right there. Goes back up, blocked from behind by Lewis. And Nelson comes away. They're letting him play here early. As Turkoglu sets up. And I don't think the Magic should try to overdo finding Howard. They've got to keep playing and pick and roll and transition without letting the Lakers link set in their half-court defense. That's three fouls on Bynum. So Gasol will re-enter. And just a bad foul. If you're Andrew Bonham, your job is to stay in between Dwight Howard and the basket. Good move by Howard. Find him to slap down. Make him make a tough shot over a contested hand of a seven-footer. That's bad defense. But the luxury that Phil Jackson has, he goes to power the shot. Howard took more free throws than anybody in the NBA this year. But again, he shot 59% as Bynum will sit down for the rest of the half. He has improved. It's something he works on frequently during the season. Howard goes at night to the practice facility in Orlando with a couple of childhood buddies who rebound for him. And he has improved. Something that he's going to need to because he just goes to the line time and time again with that strength. You know, one thing I like, I like Stan Van Gundy playing to me and Nelson start his minutes. If you're going to play him, play him start his minutes because he gives this Orlando Magic team, once again, a different dimension. He's your best chance at defeating the Lakers. Not just one game, but you got to win four. Fisher for three. That's good. Derek Fisher's found the mark early. Three for four. 
Well, it's four minutes remaining. Second quarter, game one of the NBA Finals. The Lakers trailing by five early. Now with a seven-point advantage. Good balance scoring led by Kobe Bryant with 12. Now a double team gets away and draws another foul. It's going to be on Gasol. That's two on foul Gasol. And those are fouls as a coach you are upset about. The double team, you can't allow them to spin away from it. It's a miss assignment for defense by Pau Gasol. Well, here, Pau Gasol's got to force him into the double team. And again, sometimes when you're as valuable as Pau Gasol is, you have to back off and not take a foul there, particularly in the first half. You can't be going Bynum and Gasol on the bench where your team then has to really downsize. Well, especially with Bynum with the three fouls, they have D.J. Bengal who might see some minutes because of foul problems. Another seven-footer sitting on the bench. Bengal right next to Bynum there. Howard's already taken eight free throws and he's six for eight. You know, but as a defense, you can't allow him to attack the rim. Your job is to force him to go to the line. But it's the right fouls that you take. Kobe Bryant. Deflected by Nelson. Bryant gets it right back. Falling away. Tough shot. Puts it in. Oh, what a shot from Kobe Bryant. See, you should be in timeout right away. You make a shot like that, you have to go to the sideline for a couple of minutes. <laughs> I, I tell you what. He dream shake, and then he hit against a very good defender in Petrus. Petrus finally gets one to go, missed his first five from the field. Michael Petrus, first five years in the league with Golden State, the big free agent signing for Orlando. Did not have a great regular season, he was injured a good part of it. As Bryant pulls up again, Kobe Bryant with 16. If you're the Magic's defense, you have to have a Shane Battier mentality. You have to stay the course. Don't get frustrated. Make them work. Turkoglu thought he felt contact, so he threw it up. Instead, threw an air ball. And we'll have a timeout. Brian having a big second quarter. A little dream shake right there. Great contest by Beatrice. Better offense by Brian. This guy, you put him in pick and roll with Gasol, that's a difficult, difficult cover. Littered about throughout, Toby McGuire and entourage's Kevin Connolly. Talking strategy, Leonardo DiCaprio, a frequent visitor to Laker games. And the great Billy Jean King, tennis Hall of Famer. All on hand. You know, this year has been obviously such an exciting year for the NBA, but it's also been a difficult one. Lost so many wonderful people. Bill Davidson and Larry Miller, two great owners. Chuck Daly, a Hall of Fame coach, recently Wayne in Tisdale. And today, the sad news that Randy Smith, a former All-Star guard, died of a heart attack today. Smith died while on a treadmill in Connecticut. He was a two-time All-Star, former MVP of the All-Star game. Such a durable guy, played in over 900 consecutive games, had the NBA record for so long. Died at the age of 60 today. Such sad news hearing about Randy Smith. I'm talking about a great, great player, one of the fastest players that this league has ever seen. Outstanding, watching him as a youngster with the Buffalo Braves. Touchdown pass to Bryant, but he has to come back and get it. And for good defense, Derek Fisher. And it has been good defense for the Lakers. We've seen that throughout the playoffs. We've also seen some subpar performances. But tonight, they're playing some good deeds. So the one thing you recognize is they're paying attention to detail. Active, rotating, contesting. Good job of just recognizing that they have to get to the body of the shooters for the Magic. This eight-point lead, the largest of the first half. We're under the two-minute mark. Here Nelson, getting a lot of time. He's already played 10 minutes. Gets inside, banks it in. Well, he, he doesn't look like he's lost any rhythm at all. He's two for four from the field. Four assists at a steal. And he wants a foul. He's back in arguing condition already. Doesn't take long for the NBA player to blame everything on someone else. Petrus trying to play physical with Bryant. It's not working though. Ryan 
also has five assists so far. Drives, kicks it out. Gasol, wide open jumper, knocks it down. You know, that's a good read. Turned down Trevor Reza, realized it was too late to get it to him at the initial denial, then made the play for Pau Gasol. Lewis for three, won't go. Over the backboard, out of bounds. Magic three of 11 from three-point range. Coming up at halftime, Stuart Scott, John Barry, Michael Wilbon, and Magic Johnson in the building will join us for the T-Mobile halftime report. A conversation between Magic and Kobe. Guys get ready and they'll analyze the first half. Uh, and I think right now the adjustment that Rashard Lewis has to, to make is Lamar Odom is a very good defender. He's closing hard to his shot. He's going to have to put the ball on the floor and attack the basket. Howard sits down. Stan Van Gundy not wanting to pick up that third foul. Push it to the basket. Inside Josh Powell. But Tapp does a good job going straight up. Well, he's played well off the bench. Bryant can't get the three. Odom's tip almost goes in. Knocked out of bounds. Still Laker ball. Odom with six rebounds and six points off the bench. And you're the Magic right now with 36 seconds to go in this half. You got to make sure the Lakers don't get a two for one. They love to get Kobe Bryant curl into that baseline. Nelson apparently taking a shot in the groin. Fisher, oh, nice play. Fisher stuck inside. Beautiful inbounds play, and it's a 10-point lead. Second layup the Lakers have gotten off the baseline out of bounds. Ball knocked off. Last touch by Nelson? No. They say Fisher touched it last, and Fisher says Danny Crawford, yes. That was a good call. <laughs> Some guy behind the shoes Crawford, you stink. <laughs> Took Lou at nine points in the first quarter. Has yet to score here in the second. Was on the bench for a while. Trying to create some space. Draws the foul. Nice play from Turkaloo as Odom picks up his second. Peter Turkaloo will go to the free throw line. Turkaloo, most improved player last season in the NBA from Turkey. He's in his ninth year in the league, fifth year with Orlando. He played a lot of big playoff games with Sacramento, was more of a bit player. But now here, one of the key guys, and he's had some big shots in this postseason as well. Had a great playoff against Cleveland, averaged over 17 a game. He's actually the team leader in assists as well during the postseason. Well, his shot, game four in Philadelphia to win it at the buzzer with a three, really saved their season. He doesn't hit that. They're down 3-1, and perhaps gone long ago. Amazing in the playoffs. The difference between winning and losing. Orlando has a foul to give here. And there's a magical holder for the final shot. Bryant gets inside, drives on Gortat, and gets it to go. Final seconds, Nelson. And Nelson does not get the shot off in time. An impressive performance from Kobe Bryant and the Lakers. They trailed early. Dwight Howard got off to a good start, as did the Magic. At one point, they led by five. But a huge second quarter. Kobe Bryant had 18 points. He's with Doris. Mikey also had six assists along with those 18 points. What areas of their defense were you personally looking to exploit? I'm just taking what they give me. You know, they want to back off and give me the shot. I'll, you know, I'm happy to take it. Mark Jackson talked about taking good fouls against Dwight Howard. He's been to the free throw line eight times. What did you think of what your team was doing with him? We did a pretty good job. You know, he's, he was in foul trouble too, so it's a little misleading to get eight free throws and still be in foul trouble. Um, but we'll have our work cut out for ourselves in the second half. Kobe, thank you. Mike. 